Hey, how's it going? It's Ollie here. So today we're going to be talking about how your Amazon business is kind of like a retail store and how if you think and study how retailers view their businesses, you can actually learn a lot about how to grow your business and how you should expect the growth to look like and how your product lines will affect your revenue levels. Okay, so this stuff's really exciting. I pulled together some new studies and new data for you today to actually teach this stuff. And hopefully you'll leave this uh, video really understanding what your business will look like in a year as you've really focused on it and grown it. Okay, so first of all, your business, you should view it as like a retail store. Okay, selling on Amazon is basically the digital equivalent of having a shop where people walk in off the street and buy stuff okay so instead of walking in off the street they are people are on their computers and it's traffic which is being directed to listings on a website it's all the same stuff but now it's just digital so if we're going to learn how to grow a business right you know online the principles are basically the same as retail so what's the first big lesson we can learn from a retailer well According to uh, the National Association of Convenience Stores, uh, they did a survey uh, on a bunch of retailers. Uh, They got 22,000 convenience stores to participate in this survey. They found out that retail retail stores, on average, stock between 2,500 and 3,000 SKUs per store. Okay, so a SKU is basically... um, it's basically another name for a product. Okay, so they have around 3,000 products on average in every retail store. Okay, so what can we learn from that? Well, we can learn that retailers don't launch one product in their shop and expect it to carry their entire business. Right, they have loads of different products, the customer walks in looks around and some products sell very well some products don't sell so well and therefore they might not stock them anymore and they might replace those bad selling products with products that might sell better okay so in your in many ways your amazon business is going to be a lot like a retailer with one very obvious difference especially if you're selling private label products, you're not going to have 3,000 SKUs, right? That would be ridiculous. I mean, maybe one day if you want to scale the business to crazy levels, you can do that. But to get to, say, a million a year, two million a year, you don't need 3,000 SKUs. You could do it with a lot less. So you should view your business as not a retail store necessarily, but maybe a shelf at a retailer's. Maybe you should see Amazon as the retailer's, okay? your product will just be one shelf inside that store. So as you can see from my beautiful drawing here, right, this is supposed to represent a shelf. You've got various different products on the shelf, different prices, but they're all in the same part of the store and they're all the same brand, right? This is really what what you wanna aim for with your products. Let's pull up some interesting data from uh, online retailers and have a look at what we can learn from how their sales have been going uh, according to the survey they were part of. So this is a, a some data I pulled from Web Retailer, okay, Web Retailer. And they did a, a survey of people who sell on eBay and Amazon, okay? So eBay sellers and Amazon sellers, and they put all the data together. One very interesting thing that they found is that, you know, they've obviously spoken to Customers who've got, you know, 50 million a year in turnover, all the way down to a few thousand a year in turnover, right? With huge stores and tiny stores. They found that 87% of all of these stores, even the biggest ones, make their money on fewer than a thousand SKUs. Okay, so you've got people with, you know, they're, they're all different ranges, up to 100,000 SKUs, 10,000 to 100,000 is 5%. We've got 36.8% of the stores with 1,000 to 10,000 SKUs, right, or products. 44% of 
is 100 to 1,000, and 13% is 1 to 100. Okay, so people have varying amounts of SKUs, but it looks like the majority make most of their money from less than 1,000. Okay, further on with this point, you can see that a vast majority of the, the sellers make their money with very little SKUs. Right? So for example, 41.1% make most of their revenue, the majority of their revenue, from 1 to 100 SKUs. Right? Even though only 13.2% of people only have 1 to 100 SKUs. 45% um, make most of their money from 100 to 1,000 SKUs, even though um, you know, most people have more SKUs than that. So what does this data mean? What, what point am I trying to get? Well, if we look at this and we imagine that most stores have a lot of SKUs and, and, and make the majority of their money from smaller amounts, we can guess that let's say you know, a store has, this is all of their products, right? Let's say, I don't know, they have 10,000 product lines. It looks like, according to this data, they probably make the majority of their revenue from a very small portion of all of their products, right? As it says here. Um, 36.8 of sellers carry 36.8 percent of sellers carry between a thousand and ten thousand SKUs. Okay, but only 12.6 make majority of their revenue on that range of SKUs. So what they're saying is these sellers might have all these products, but they don't all make the majority of their revenue from all the products. They probably make the majority of the revenue from a much smaller portion of all of their products. Okay. The point is, this is going to be exactly the same in your business, right? The stuff that's going on online, whether it's eBay, Amazon, whatever, is going to reflect what happens in retail stores, right? And, and actually, what we're looking at here is something that's known as the Pareto Principle, where quite often you'll find that you'll make 80% of your effect from 20% of the cause, right? You'll get 80% of your revenue from 20% of your products. So what does this mean and what can we learn from it when we're building our Amazon business? Well, let's say you have 10 products for sale on your Amazon account. Okay. If we follow this rule here, the Pareto principle, which has been proven by the data we've looked at, suggesting that a lot of stores make a lot of sales from the small amount of products. Let's say you launch 10 products. You'll probably make most of your revenue from maybe two or maybe three, okay? You might have maybe a few other lines that do okay, and you know, you make a little bit of revenue from them, but not too much. You'll probably have a couple of products that you launch and you do everything right, but for whatever reason, they just don't perform that well. Maybe they break even, maybe you make a little bit of a loss on them. Maybe they sell well for a while, but then, you know, they just fizzle out and you don't want to restock them anymore. This is definitely what your business is going to look like. right? I can certainly say that if I was to analyze my business, break down all my inventory, this is exactly what it would look like. Right? I've got a few products that do very, very, very well, you know, over £3,000 profit per month. And we've got some products that just tick over and they, they sell. They do well, but, you know, they're not blinders. Maybe they'll do like a grand a month or something like that. And then I've got the odd product that just doesn't really do too well it breaks even uh, and I just kind of let it go this is how you can expect your business to look now the reality of it is you don't know which one of these products right let's say you launch 10 products over say the space of a year or two years or whatever the reality is you don't know which one of these products you're going to launch first some people are a little bit unlucky and they might launch one of these products first right they might launch a product that does well for a bit then fizzles out or it breaks even. You might get lucky and you might launch this product first. And I've certainly helped a lot of people do that. They've launched their first product, it's done three, four K a month profit, 
and you know they've, they've been ecstatic both of these scenarios can be good and bad right because if you launch a product that breaks even first right and you do like you know this one the bad thing is yes you're off for a bit of a slow start and it doesn't feel nice but the, the good thing is the chances are now you're probably going to launch uh, either a product that does okay or a product that does very well next right the, the good thing about launching a product like this is you know you make a lot of money and you get a lot of sales but what I've seen happen is some people who, who start the business launch a product at I say three four K a month profit within a month or two or two or three months of it launching they think that every single product they launch is going to be the same in reality it's not Right, the second product you launch might be one of these. You might screw up and make a mistake and launch this product next. Right, You might miss one of the uh, criteria or, or something. This is just the nature of the business. So the only way we can get from the point of having you know zero products to having 10 and being able to experience this whole effect is by being in this business for the long run not just expecting to launch one product and have all of your eggs in in one basket and expect to get money from that definitely from day one but knowing we need to launch a range of products and expecting some of them to do very 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 well some of them to do okay and some of them to not really perform that well and looking at this really as a long-term game rather than what can I achieve in the next month or two. Okay, so I hope this has given you a bit of an insight as to how your mindset should be when you're thinking about building your Amazon business, when you're planning ahead. And I hope this gives you almost a bit of a crystal ball so you can see exactly what your business will look like once you've launched many products. So if you haven't done so already, by the way, make sure you subscribe if I can even spell it right because every Thursday I'm going to be uploading a new video just like this and uh, if you subscribe you'll get notifications and you'll see the videos popping up in your recommended feed and in your email so you can get a reminder uh, and I'll see you next Thursday